This is Grok Talk coming to you live from CNHT Studios in beautiful and somewhat chilly Concord, New Hampshire. We'd like to remind you, if you missed this or a past program, you can listen on Spreaker, Stitcher, iTunes, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, GraniteRock.com, Ustream, YouTube, and The Rock. NHCR.com. So we're here with Ed Nail talking about C. Robert Gibson and uh, in the process leading up to the grand jury indictment of Mr. Gibson, Mr. Nail had been engaging in some other activities with other other states where, of course, he has been registered or had a car or... or had a car. Had a car. Had a car. Yeah, we, uh, when we first found uh, C. Robert Gibson, he was living at uh, 85 Center Street. He has a little a parking place at the end of the parking lot. And his original car was a black Honda with 969 ZTG license plates, which were two years expired. So he's got, he's a registered voter here in New Hampshire. He's registered in Kentucky. He's registered in Connecticut. I think he's registered in Texas. Texas won't tell me. And uh, Wisconsin, Connecticut, and New Hampshire. So he's registered in all these different places. And he has his car registered in Connecticut. So I contact Connecticut. And they said, oh, he hasn't been a resident here for at least two years because he's not even on the list of people who own cars here anymore. So I went down to the Concord PD, and I talked to an officer down there. He was furious about that. And within a day or two, I didn't see the car anymore. So I, I stalk Carl. You know, I drive past his house every time I go to Concord. I whoop, I go in and center to Merrimack Street and swing by Summit Street and head off. Maybe he'll be there sometime. Maybe I'll deliver flowers. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, he, he, that car's gone. There's another car there now with some goofy license plate on it. Uh, a, uh, one of those vanity plates. So that that's what's going on. So when you have this situation when they're registered in multiple states, there's your opportunity. Maybe other states will prosecute voter fraud. So I contact Kentucky, and I got a hold of someone from the AG's office there named uh, Scott, J. Scott. He wasn't happy about the situation. He says, we'll prosecute him. So they send me his voter history. Well, he's been registered in Kentucky since 2007 till recently when we had him removed in Hardin County, and he's updated his residence over and over and over again, but never voted. So Jay Scott said, well, you know, I'll take it to, the, to my boss, and they said, we're not going to prosecute because he didn't actually vote here. We don't have a strong enough case. But I will contact the other states involved and let them know what we're doing. <laughs> and he goes, I have a call into a guy named Steve Labonte in your state. <laughs> I said, well, he won't be able to call you back today because he's in court with Carl. I just left there where Carl had his arm around me. It's a small world, isn't it? So uh, (laughs) I contact Wisconsin. Now, before I did that, he's out of Madison. He has an address at 244 Lakeland Place in Madison, Wisconsin. That's his apartment. It's a condo. 30 or 40 other people live there. They're all political activists. It's a left-wing condo. Vegan, moon bat condo. So So are you saying that some philanthropic left-wing organization maintains this entire condo building for the purposes of of, uh, of supporting left-wing moonbats in they their all, activities? They all worked for left-wing organizations, so in a it's sense, a moon bat house. It, is, it is a yeah. moonbat house. So anyway, he has an address there. So I should call it the Belfry. Rather than contact Madison, and you can, their AG could be very well like ours, doesn't want to prosecute Democrats. So I've been working around the angles on that, and I've been getting information from taxpayers groups and i got a blogger there that's pretty well known and he's interested i sent him the stuff he goes he loves the indictment i started sending him stuff months ago so monday see robert gibbs and start we'll start getting some press in wisconsin and we'll see if we can't get him back there here's what he did he registered here at the general election in november of 2012 he signed a document and he registered the same day so that means he signed a document that said I hereby understand under penalty of perjury that I am registering my my domicile as New Hampshire and I am not going to vote in any other state's election, state or federal election, and I am not registered in any other state. That's basically what that says. So he signs his name, penalty of perjury, $2,000 fine a year in jail. He signs that. He becomes a New Hampshire registered voter. That's in 2012. 2013, on August 8th, I think it was, he gets arrested for chaining himself to a Madison, you know, <laughs> state office, uh, the uh, Capitol building steps or some damn thing. Anyway, he gets arrested there, and he gives Lakeland Place as his address. So when the cops arrest him, his arrest record says 244 Lakeland Place. What's that mean? The cops saw his ID. His ID says 244 Lakeland Place. It doesn't say Summit Street, Concord, New Hampshire. 
So he's got a driver's license from Wisconsin 2013. He votes there in their state election for Supreme Court Justice 2014. He votes here by absentee. Now, we're going to post on Granite Rock, and we're now I've had to bite my tongue for a long time about voter fraud in New Hampshire. For a couple of months, I've been like radio silence on this. We have a lot of irons in the fire. I got another guy we're waiting on. He's registered in two other states we know of and actively voting there. <laughs> in, and, uh, in, in both those other states? Uh, yeah, both the other states. And one state, I've already talked to five different people from his county there, and we're working with them. He, I don't think he knows it, and they're not very happy about it, that he's registered here, uh, registered in other states and voting other states. We're waiting for him sometime, maybe second week in November, we'll release that one. I just got some information on a town clerk working with a university to trade names and dorms so they can register people. I nice. don't think that's legal. <clears throat> I don't think in a college either. town, huh? Here in New Hampshire. Yep. So I have the oh, uh, boy. I have that evidence. Can you smell the sea from there? The more <laughs> press you get for uncovering voter fraud, the more tips come to you. Yeah. So now I I can go through a lot of stuff I collected in 2012, 2014. I can use those names. People have been waiting. You know, like I saw someone do this or that. Well, we don't get them this time. We get them next time. This time, when you go into the, to vote. You bring a camera with you. You write. You bring people for witnesses, things like that. So a lot of the work that we put into this will have some payoff, like Carl Robert Gibson. I can unload now to these other outfits, like Kentucky. We're going to try Texas. On I got some help. We're going to discover whether or not he has a voting history in Texas as well. Sometimes when I contact these states, they don't want to give you information because I don't have a badge, you know. Mm-hmm. But I have someone who has kind of a badge who's looking into this in Texas. So I'd like to add his voting history in Texas. The more you add this together, the more pieces of the puzzle you have, and the, they just can't defend themselves after a while. So it'd be nice if the New Hampshire Attorney General would use the information that we gather over the Internet, which he could get easily uh, when, they, when they prosecute these people. Because I wouldn't want to see – I would not like to see Carl Robert Gibson, see Robert Gibson – prosecuted just for drinking a couple beers and making a stupid phone call. I want to see him prosecuted with the jury knowing exactly what he is and set it up so people here, the activists that are here now working on campaigns, like this other guy we caught and haven't released his name yet, that they know ahead of time that we're stalking them, we're going to catch them, and we're going to make them pay in their other state. So right now I know for a fact that college students are being registered and they're being told how to register all over the state this is going to go on now i know one specific case because i have the documentation on it that they're working on these colleges to get them registered now way ahead of time so they don't have the big long lines and they're not as visible so if you're a listener and you're in a college town almost any town keep checking up on who's registering to vote now and you see if there's clusters of people registering because that's, that's the process. They're going to quietly get as many people registered as possible, let them vote, and they're gone. Remember, in 2012, I think there's still 2,000 people unaccounted for from that. And I don't know how many from 2014. Registered voters who came in without any ID were allowed to vote and left. And when they were contacted by the Attorney General's office, you know, per New Hampshire state law, no response, no one at that address, no such address. So we have about 2,000 of those people uninvestigated. Now, I would be glad to investigate them if I could get that list of names from the Secretary of State or the AG. I don't think that's forthcoming, so we have to find them as we can. And this is also an opportunity for legislators to find, to glaringly see how to change our laws to prevent this from happening again. Step number one, never have another Democrat governor who vetoes clean election laws. Well, you know. What about the judgeships, though? Because that's really where oh, a lot man, of the problems have been. Yeah, I was hoping on the... Uh, with the Supreme Court case where the AG, where this Labonte went in and defended, uh, you know, the voters against college student voters, I thought we would get an opportunity to see a case, but when it was all pre-decided. Once he agreed that domicile meant residence and residence meant domicile, you get multiple domiciles, but only one residence. <laughs> I mean, when you agree to that ahead of time, you've lost your case. So the Supreme Court wasn't put in the ugly position of having to say, yeah, our Constitution says domicile. Domicile means your one legal address to the exclusion of all others. They never had to make that decision. So that decision is still up in the air. So if anything happens and we get an opportunity to go back to court, we have to lean on judges to make real decisions, not these phony, like Claremont. 
You know, cherish mm. means to pay for with an income tax to them. <laughs> so this is happening. Once you let this stuff happen, it snowballs and keeps going. Now it's affecting everybody because everybody votes and has the opportunity to vote. This sounds like, no wonder you're a registered Democrat. Ed. This is using the liberals' own tactics against them. Slowly, slowly catchy yeah. monkey a little bit at a time in the courts and, and make them feel the pressure. You never let them know how many of them you are, how much you know, or that it will ever end. Of course, that's the key. You know, uh, of course, it will never end. end, You know, so that we're using Saul Alinsky's rules against them, basically. I mean, I I rewrote them fifteen years ago. I rewrote those when we started doing taxpayer groups. Say, here's what we take those rules for radicals, and we draft them for taxpayers, and that's how we go after these people. And the left hates it. They hate it, and there's really nothing they can do about it. And I know that, I know they're being told to watch out for me specifically. My name's been used, so I know that I have that coming back to me. So, that's a good feeling. A and badge of honor. Yeah, it's a, a small badge of honor, but it's a badge we'll gladly wear. The other thing we want to do is, uh, out in the office, we have uh, posters and things of uh, some of our victories. We want, if I can't get a three-dimensional, at least want a picture of Carl Robert Gibson's head up on that wall somewhere. So, <laughs> 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 Or a picture of him in handcuffs going well, I can, to jail. Well, I can always send you the picture that I use for the meme without the words. You yeah, he is. That. Well, I have a video I just I started to post. So you get to see him in action in 2012. He's leading 50 uh, protesters, probably eight or ten of them, you know, down in uh, Manchester against Frank Kent. And you get to see what a blithering idiot he is. Oh, it's, uh, there, there has to be a way with modern uh, video and gaming software to create a three-dimensional avatar of, of uh, C. Robert Gibson from from pictures and videos that we have of him. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll put together it. You know what you want to make it of? It's putty. I've met him. So he's basically putty. I mean, he'll... He'll be fabulous in jail. <laughs> One time we had a child molester in my town, and my, another guy, Garrick Pelletier, has passed away. He and I pursued this guy. I mean, went after him, went to all his hearings and stuff, and sat in the front row in the Supreme Court. He wanted to withdraw his guilty plea two years later after he'd served two years in a special part of the prison. Garrick and I are sitting in the front row of the Supreme Court going, like, just shaking our heads. <laughs> and his, his lawyer said, Your Honors, look at him. He won't survive in general population. <laughs> well, that's the way Carl Carl Gibson is. He's not he's not cut out for doing push ups and jail. He'll be a day. different man if he comes out He'll of be jail. A different man. He will be and right now, I believe he is here also to help um, Bernie Sanders. He writes about Bernie Sanders all the time. Well guess what, Carl? Guess what, Carl? No opportunity to do that. No, he can definitely recruit campaign uh campaign help from prison. He's writing. Yeah, from prison, yeah. You know. <laughs> Handwriting with a pencil, you know, never no. do pencil. You'll find a way to vote. Yeah, that's good though. Uh, <laughs> hey, we're we're making one step forward. The trick is to take media like we have and drive the regular media to accept it. You, the Concord Monitor's pretending he was a drunken volunteer from who knows where. The the other paper in Manchester, really not much about that. They report what's happening. Um, you know, we have an opportunity to really drive this story because we know so much about it, and we've got all the other guys in line. So there's going to be other names released, and we're going to have more of these idiots come in from out of state not knowing that they're in trouble and, and that we have a process set up to catch them. So this is fun to see somebody, uh, you know, that sad little face in the papers. <laughs> <laughs> you got about 40 seconds. Uh, how do people help you out, reach you, contact you? Send well, check, check cnht.org. You can uh, make a donation through PayPal to our website. And I'm going to try and have CNHT's website document-laden. You can go there for the documents, download. Like, I pulled the 12 pages from his criminal jacket down in uh, Superior Court. I'll put that in there. I darkened them up so we can we can post those. Websites, all the information on Carl. And maybe tip off some of these other guys that this is what's going to happen. So our different websites will be, uh, you know, you guys have stories, and we have the radio and stuff. Uh, Rich Gerard does things. And Nashua Patch has actually mm-hmm. picked up on this. So uh, if you want to help us out, cnht.org, uh, review what we have. There's some pictures of some other voter fraudsters, and if they weren't, they, their lawyer could contact us and have their pictures removed. But so far, no nope. one has. All right, and uh, a little break, and we'll be right back after that. From the CNHT studios in Concord, New Hampshire, just a few blocks from the New Hampshire State House. this is Rock Talk. 